Good morning. This is Terry Couty, founder and director of Deep Sea Foundation. Welcome to the educational channel where we talk about all options and topics related to breast reconstruction. Very honored today to have back on the program Dr. Richard Klein. He is from the Center for Natural Breast Reconstruction in Charleston, South Carolina. And we are speaking to him in clinic today. He has been kind enough to take time out to visit with us. His colleague and partner, Dr. Uh, James Craigie. Oh, is he coming? Here he is. Yes, we have you both on board. Hi, Dr. Craigie. Just Hi. Doing some quick introductions here. Thank you guys so much, you know, for taking time out of your day during your busy clinic hours to educate about uh, breast reconstruction. <clears throat> we are filming right in the middle of a pandemic, and so that's something I want to talk about this morning. I think um, for breast reconstruction in particular, you know, we have implant-based, we have autologous reconstruction. You guys really specialize in flap surgery or autologous using your own tissue. In that setting, the availability of microsurgeons becomes kind of thinned out a little bit because it's a very specialized program. And by thinned out, I mean there's not as many across the country, so sometimes women have to travel for the reconstruction. Telemedicine has been around a while. Uh, you guys have done either phone consults, other consults for patients who come to you from out of town, but now during the pandemic, it's becoming a little, you know, it might become the new normal. So what I'd like for you guys to talk to us today about, let's talk about how a patient can prep for these uh, telemedicine or, uh, video chats, consults, and, um, you know, how you guys go about handling them. And I don't care who starts. Um, thank you, Terry. We uh, think it's a great question and a great topic. Since we have been doing what we call perforator flap breast reconstruction since 2002, at that time, that things were similar in that there weren't a lot of places doing it. And so many of our patients from that point and, and, and currently would come from out of town. And depending on where they're from and how far they would have to go, uh, it was often more convenient for us to do a consult over the phone and, and talk to them before they actually got on a plane and traveled. Uh, and so we would actually then, once we uh, did a phone consult, get them prepared for surgery uh, uh, from a distance and then actually meet them the day before surgery. Uh, and so we've been doing that for years. And so when uh, the telemedicine came about, it became kind of secondhand and it's, it's, uh, it's better even so because we can, uh, we can look at pictures and videos real time. Whereas before we're trying to get pictures sent, but it's essentially the same thing. And so we can get the big picture certainly giving you know, hands-on or an examination you get additional information but uh, we can usually come to a conclusion and a plan without actually seeing the person in person um, yeah um <clears throat> you know the um the uh the virtual uh meetings with video are they they add to the telephone consultation but they're really not all that different and as, um, as James said, we've been doing telephone consultations more, more often than not when we would operate on a patient from out of town, we would physically meet them for the first time the day before surgery. And amazingly enough, we have never had to cancel a patient's surgery with the exception of, I think, one patient who unexpectedly had a problem after she got here. And we would prepare for our telephone consultations by... Uh, the, someone in the office uh, would take um, a standardized form history about all the things important to breast reconstruction, their prior surgeries, did they have radiation, other procedures, et cetera, et cetera, medical problems. And many times the patient would send pictures. So by the time we got to the telephone consultation, we really knew all the basics and we could really start to dig in, get to know the patient, ask a lot of particulars about their situation, find out where they really wanted to go 
uh, what impediments, if any, there were to keep us from getting there. And uh, we sort of many times felt like we kind of knew them after having the phone consultation. The video is even better because while it's no substitute for a physical exam, it does, uh, especially if the patient is comfortable doing it. It lets us ask other things like, well, you know, would you mind if I looked at such and such a donor site? And um, would you mind pinching that area for me to see <laughs> just how much is available? And you can learn a huge amount. And it's not, it's not quite the same as having them in person, but it's, it's, it definitely uh, adds an element of um, information that we like to have. I can absolutely see that. That pinch is, that visual pinch uh, would add to it, I would say, because for me, I, did a, I didn't do a virtual consult. I filled out the medical form virtually, if you will, secure site. Then uh, just because I was a delayed uh, deep, I, I felt more comfortable physically going first to get an exam. But that's just not always possible. I think what I want patients or viewers to know, this consult situation, as you guys both spoke about, and then you know, solidifying a date, flying in and seeing you the day before, it works out very well. Some patients get very nervous about that. They're like, they're gonna see me the day before, you know. It, it's such a calculated process of gathering medical data. And, and so like, what would be a typical uh, preparation, um, Dr. Craigie, pre-operative preparation, simple blood work, things like that, to get them the, ready? The most important thing that, that we need to see in addition to talking to them and maybe the video is an MR angiogram of their blood vessels. And so that usually almost always has to be done here in Charleston. So that's actually done before we see them and actually prepare for surgery. Um, otherwise, a simple test may be CBC, blood count, uh, and then I think the hospital requires maybe a urine analysis or anything that might be indicated based on something that's going on. All those things we usually get uh, while, before, while a patient is at home. So we don't have to do that. We want everything ready. We don't want any surprises if someone's going to make that journey we really do everything to cross the teeth, dot our eyes, so that when they make that trip, it's all done and there are no surprises. Um, and so yeah. the, uh, almost all tests are already, are already done. Yeah, and um, while you know the time we spend with the patient is limited usually to a phone call or a virtual visit, our PA is a nurse practitioner who have taken care of hundreds and hundreds of patients. They typically invest hours in making sure that the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed, and they really get 95% of the credit for why things usually work so well after the patient gets here. You know, that's a good point that, that both of you bring up. Do you ever have patients uh, come in the day before and they get that feeling like, I already know you guys because of what you've been through. I, I don't know, I felt like that, you, you know, you mentioned Dr. Klein about the PAs and the nurses getting to know these patients prior. I, I felt like that. When I walked into my first consult, never having seen my plastic surgeon, it was all those cl phone calls and data gathering from the nurses and the, and, and the other staff, I knew they already knew me. Yeah, um, it's it's kind of strange, you know. Um, uh, reconstruction is not a, a surgery; it's a process, and depending on the patient's goals and where they start, where they want to go, it could stretch out to close to a year. And um, it's kind of like uh, w when we see them for the first time; it's almost like meeting a new member of the family. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and you're right; the groundwork is laid, and it's not like we're seeing a total stranger when we finally see them in person for the first time. Yeah. A lot of folks using their cameras or or uh, laptops for their consults. Cameras, I buy camera. I mean, uh, mobile phone. Both, both, but lots of phones. Because mm -hmm. everyone has one. Yeah, and it, and it's easy to move around, and you know what our our partners or husbands 
showing those bellies and then the lady pinches it? Is that how it goes? <laughs> Sometimes that's how it goes, yeah. I love that. Well, you've yeah. given, given some good insight, uh, really, to the way kind of these teleconferences go. And like I said, in the time of the pandemic, might be our new normal. It's going to be for a while, I think, for out-of-town patients who are traveling for reconstruction. Um, anything else you guys want to add this morning? How about how about things not to do? What what's the prep? I've heard some interesting stories from surgeons like don't do it when you're on your way to work. <laughs> well, we are our, our, all of our patients are prepped that, that they're going to need to show us parts of their body. So they're almost all uniformly, you know, starting at where in somewhere in the house that, that's private and they've asked people either to leave or they've gone to the room where it's private, uh, where they can feel comfortable. Uh, and, you know, otherwise we prepped them with a phone call from our office, making sure they have uh, a functioning camera and all that. And it's really very easy and we click on and there they are. Um, uh, yeah, we just have to make sure we don't lose a connection in the middle. There's certainly bumps in the road like that. But. Oh yeah. yeah. While it's not essential, it can be very um, handy if they have a trusted person, they don't mind helping them to actually hold the camera from a distance mm -hmm. and look at different potential donor areas. And well, and that's a second ear too. Right. 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 And how about, how about taking notes and having them? Right. Yeah. Having your questions ahead of time, writing down notes as you go, all of that. Certainly. Always helps to have someone there if possible, yeah. but not everyone does. No, no. I think you just have to be uh, as prepared as possible. So you guys have given some great tips this morning. Um, thank you for that. And um, I hope the viewers have, uh, the ability to watch this and know these are very, very doable, very successful for patients. So thanks for taking the time to do this this morning. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Please um, give us a thumbs up on our videos and let us know if you have any questions or comments about this. And also if you have any other topics you would like us to cover. Gentlemen, Dr. James Craigie and Richard Klein from the Center for Natural Breast Reconstruction, thanks for being our guests this morning. Thank, Thank you, Terry. Have a great day. You too.